I'm yours. I'm ready. Who wants to fire first? If you got it. Hey, Professor. This is Eddie. What's up, Eddie? How you doing? Doing great. I have a question. Guys. What's up? I said, good to see you guys. Good to see you. Hi. Good to see you, Professor Dallas. Um, yeah, I have a question. Uh, in taking someone's back, uh, I have a lot of sneaky uh, ways I like to take them back. Sometimes when they feel like uh, they're no longer defending, they just go after the toes and in an effort that you'll abandon the back take. So go out and get caught like in a toe hole while taking their back. Um, I was wondering if you had a way, uh, once the toe hold is set and it's a battle to kind of take their back and choke them out, uh, do you have a, a good escape from toe holds? Huh. So I guess you're like using your guard to maneuver through and the last thing that they can see is your your leg kind of dangling there and, and they're diving on it. Is that kind of how it's happening? Yes. Well, let me say this. You know, for example, I'm just kind of trying to throw out a random, um, you know, scenario or situation uh you know maybe you're you're swinging around or, or going between the legs like kissing the dragon or something like that the sooner that you can get a grip on the back of the column, um, the, the harder of the time they're going to have to be able to, to to crunch and roll in for the hole. okay unless you have a sleeve grip if you have a sleeve grip you know, they're not going to be able to connect their hands or, or at least get enough of a, of a connection to put, to, to put leverage on the toe hold, you know. So a sleeve grip would be ideal. If you're losing the sleeves to climb to the back, you got to get that back collar grip, all right? Uh, you know, just like, for an example, just kind of going and using, let me see, let me get a little bit, like, if I'm getting in a situation where I'm about to climb up to his back and he's, you know, starting to lock, he's, he doesn't have a way to put a torque on this yet. He's going to need to get, like, kind of dive and get his legs in position, you know, where he can maybe get one knee, uh, you know, isolate my leg a little more, almost like in a knee bar position. I don't know if you can see. So now my knee's in between his legs, right? Mm -hmm. if, my, if my leg, go ahead and go back. If my leg is still on the outside uh, before he, you know, creates that, he doesn't have the leverage right now, you know. Uh, he needs to, to create that pinch on my leg and fix his angle. Because right now, too, he can try to go, but he doesn't have enough. He needs to fall either that way or, or the other way. Yes, and now get his legs in and create the goal. So, before he can he can fall and adjust, if I get a big collar grip on the back here, you know, and I start to pull and like bring him forward, like now I bring him back. Now he can't go forward to create that roll, and then I can start to come through, get control of his hands, or even just kind of like, you know, I mean, he's going for a toll here. You know, it's a, it's kind of a state of an emergency, right? So if I can just get around his face and pull him back, now he's gonna let go, you know? Um, but we gotta, we gotta get up there, right? If you just stay seated, holding a bell, and kind of like, you know, looking to, to, to set up the perfect back take, um, and you're taking too long to get the back of that collar, you know, it's gonna give him time to, to connect his hands and roll into a position where it's, it could be a real problem, right? I mean, other than that, all you can do, I mean, if you're totally like far from getting his, his upper body, you know, his arm or his head or anything like that, you're going to have to roll and kick, you know. Uh, like if it starts to come on and he falls back and he gets a pretty decent angle on it, I mean, I need to roll it. I already have my, my foot in ready to kick. So as I turn to leave, I can start to kick his butt, you know, and spin and just keep kicking to – to break free, but that's if I if I, my arms are are nowhere near getting his upper body. But the fact that you're behind him, like you just need to climb up a little sooner. If all you can reach is the back of the collar, that'll be great. Um, 
you know, but maybe make a little more of an attempt to go to a seatbelt like a little sooner, um, you know, or, or just get up. I mean, there's the guys who can stay standing and turn around. There's the guys that can, that are really good at staying on their feet in a position like this for a long period of time. They have good base. You can't set them down and you got a foot kind of dangling there, you know? I mean, if you're having a, a situation of being able to get up here, it's time to just put a hand on the floor and just like start to get up and hop on, you know? It, 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 I'm being super general here. I'm just kind of trying to scan how this could happen. Yes. Um, I, I, am I kind of hitting it? A no, little that's, bit? that's perfect. That's perfect. All three of those scenarios are kind of what I'm, I'm falling into. And uh, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Back of the collar. If you already have a sleeve, you know, keep the sleeve. Um, and then, you know, try to climb up. But if you don't, if you're doing like, you know, a belt, a Mirabolo style, like belt and leg or something like that, as soon as you can kind of see that back, it's time to reach up there and get yeah. the back of the collar and pull them so that you can pull them to your chest to back connection. You know, until you have that, and they're still able to move and turn and look for your feet and things like that, that can definitely be a little bit of a risk. Okay. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Anybody else have a, a question ready to, to fire that they wanna they wanna look at? Uh, I've got a quick one, Professor. Yes, Josh. Um, I have uh, I've been playing with and have had some success in the past with like the double um, headquarters position uh but against uh taller more skilled opponents uh even if i feel like my legs are wide enough I, they still kind of get that vice sweep going on there like they'll scoot their shoulders out and get that thing in there if, um should i not try that on on taller guys or just no no you still, still should still should there's still a moment you can be very dangerous there in fact guys um you know he he, he we had a, a, a role where he was able to, to drop in really well. Um, what, what I think you might be doing is staying there too long, okay? Um, once you've established the double wall and both of their legs are outside, you need to look for your opportunity to drop a knee and go into the half guard, okay? So I'm a big fan of the double wall, like being solid with both knees and both arms on the inside. This is a very, very great position. Of course, if you stay here too long and the guy is long enough to be able to reach his feet, they get a little lock, it can, it can get tighter and tighter over time and it can become an issue, right? Um, but if I have my double wall and I, you know, I, I've got it, I'm, I'm, I have good structure, you know, I'm ready to go, okay? Just pick up a foot and drive it in. All right, so I'll do this side since we're closer here. Once I'm here and I'm blocked enough, even if he's not really turning too much one side or the other, you know, if he's staying flat, that's fine. I'm just gonna pick up my knee so now my, my leg can come over, all right? And I'm gonna start to drop in. This is just too great an opportunity to, to get it tight. Um, you know, when you just fall, fall into a great spot, you have to keep your chin up. Okay, the guy's blocking for making a good half guard. And now I can just kind of decide if I'm going to float all the way through the map, or maybe kind of like twist a bit and get like a double uh, knee cut kind of going on there and slide through. All right? And what I'll do, if I can feel them searching for the plier sweep, I'll counter that by raising one of those legs. Okay? And so they'll end up going for a plier sweep without both legs in them. All right? My legs are a little closer, and I feel down starting to look for the lock. Once I raise my leg up, see, my leg is no longer there. A lot of times, you can step all the way out of it, and maybe knee cut, or still drop into the half guard. Or, if my foot is still in there a little bit, that's fine. I'll just sit down. Just literally drop down, and now I look for the lock of control. They'll, they'll really never have good frames set, because they're probably, you know, looking for some pants or sleeves or, you know, trying to do something to, to break your double wall. And so when you fall in, 
I generally find it to be really easy to get like the head and under hood and, and like the snacks a couple seconds later. But that's a big deal. All right. I, I mean, I do this all the time and, and not so much this exact scenario. I mean, I might be in more of a regular headquarters, but I feel like, you know, I feel like this leg isn't strong enough. Maybe he keeps getting this other one out and I'll just kind of like lift my knee almost like I'm going towards the body and then drive it over, you know? Um, it's really good if someone's playing collar sleeve and they're not holding my leg and they're pulling me, they're trying to get that foot on my hip, you know? Once I, like, I feel that foot coming up, I'll kind of turn my hip and bring this leg up and I start to, to pressure, keep the leg a little stronger. I start to pressure on the back of your thigh like this, you know? Just leaning on the back of your thigh until I can get my knee far enough forward and I can start to slide down. And once again, I'm dropping in again, all right? I call this dropping in. Like look, if I say look to drop in, that's what I'm talking about. Like fall right into the half guard. And you can, you know, just don't make any grips uh, so you can see this better. But I can create this really easily. Like here, you know, it's strong, right? But once I start to bring my knee up, look how it, it, it gets rid of his foot, right? And so I can do this all the time, all right? That's essentially the same move I'm looking to do when I'm here on the double wall. I'm just gonna pick my knee up, boom, drive over, okay? okay? So don't stay there too long, long enough to block them and neutralize so they can't get set and then feel which side is maybe, you know, a little weaker or, or, or you know, a side that you prefer and just pick that leg up and, and drop it over. It's so easy, so simple, but it's solid. I mean, it's it's a way in and they're completely flat, you know? Um, they're not like, at an angle, it could be a little tough. So anytime when they're right in front of you is a good time to do this. And you can do it, like I said, I, I showed another variation on the collar sleeve. It could even be spider guard. I showed this to Popolo and then he started doing it to me and I got mad, right? But, you know, here, if he's got a good angle, it's not there, right? But if you're keeping your elbows in and you're in this battle, like this can be a tough battle, right? You can still have good tension. I can't get rid of his legs. But once I start putting my knee right there, now it starts to weaken up and I can get rid of it and look to come in over or it's possible I might even kind of get to where I'm under and more of a leg drag, doing this, making down to splits, right? And get kind of a stack pass or a leg drag out of it, you know? But I really like that approach, um, you know, kind of just going leg first and seeing where, where you land, you know what I mean? Um, but it can, it can block them from putting their legs in position. Does that make sense? Yeah, excellent, man, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Just don't stay in that double, that double wall for too long. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think I was kind of hanging out there. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Anybody else have a question they know they want to look at? Hey, Professor, I got one for you. Sure. Brad? Um, hey, Brad. Speaking with uh, the spider guard. Um, Got any tips for dealing with, especially when they stretch out one of your arms, when you have one arm really stretched out in the spider and the other one's collapsed, just shedding that? Um, so everything comes down to, you know, relieving the tension and getting our arms inside, all right? Um, I'm always gonna follow, like if he starts making an angle, I'm gonna start moving back to the center, you know? And, I, and I'm really actively trying to keep my elbows to my ribs as much as possible. Right, um, and, and just undo the tension as much as I as I have to. Just try to come back in. He stays a little strong here. It's now it's closer to me that once again I can start to use my leg to, to free some of that tension. You know, kind of bending his knee. All right, and allowing me now to circle my hand in. And once I get my hand on the inside, you know, if I have a good grip on the other side, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to move. All right. Uh, Professor Victor Hugo showed something very similar when he was here on the day of the grand opening, uh, when we all taught something. 
uh, that was something that he uh, kind of broke down a little bit for everybody. But, you know, you just, I, I'm looking like, I, my, my main two options are either put the tension on here, or to, to flick down and move, okay? Or to work like going under both. And once again, trying to relieve, get my hands in. Now, that was kind of me doing both at once. It may be that one leg is stronger. Like now I can't really do this one. I'm too far from that side, but I can deal with the leg that's straight, okay? I'm trying to bend that knee with my knee, boom. Now get this hand in. And now I can see if I have a good grip here, now I can start to back up and flip it down and move. Or maybe it's, it's strong enough that I can do that. And that, you know, I don't have a good grip or something like that, but I need to come under as well. Do two movements. Maybe now I make my wall. Now I start to, to drive my knee over, you know, or I make my headquarters. Uh, but it's just clearing, you know, that process of clearing and getting past the feet. Uh, but try to keep your elbows in and, you know, deal with both at once if you can. If not, one at a time, and the leg that's straight will take priority because I can't even get to that other side right now. So I have to deal with this one. Okay. There are other options of like stepping on the leg, you know, which totally valid, right? If I can like maybe cross step, that will help me break this grip. And then once I break the grip on one side, the other one is, is really weak for a leg drag. Okay. So you could go that route. Um, just, you know, be, be easy. You're not going to make a lot of friends <laughs> in, in the academy if you're always just, Bruh! I'm just stepping and ripping, you know. Uh, so always be easy on that. But in competition, go for it, okay? Uh, you know, it's possible I could do the other side as well. Break that side. Get my little drag, okay? Um, I, I try not to do that when I train very much. But, you know, it is a good option. Perfect, thank you. Welcome. Good question so far, guys. I like it. Anybody else want to come in with one? Yeah, Sensei Lovato, I have one. Um, yes. I, I want to know, is uh, self-confidence something that you've always had throughout your journey? And if not, how did you start developing uh, uh, self-confidence and uh, how much of a game changer uh, uh, was it for you? All right, very good question. Um, this is actually something some of my students were asking about um, in our in our academy group, and uh, I made a you know special video talking about this. Um, you know, especially in regards to competing and uh, for the mindset of the competitor. Um, Self confidence is is pretty much everything. You know. If you, if you think you can, you will. If you think you can't, you won't. Uh, you know, what, what happens inside your head very much has the tendency to become real, you know? Um, so like, if you don't believe, then when things, like it's one thing if maybe you're a little unsure, but then, okay, you can tell that uh, maybe they're not as good as what you think or what you originally thought. All right, then you can kind of, all right, no, no, never mind, I got this, I got this. But if it's tough, um, you'll never get going, you'll never get started. Um, so all of that just comes down with training the, the you know, your self-talk, like what is in your mind. We all have, we all have issues with confidence, all right? I mean, not everyone out there does, but uh, most normal human beings, <laughs> you know, we all, we all can, can fluctuate with how we feel um, as far as our confidence. We all have fears, you know, maybe it's not the certain person um, that we're competing against, but just the general fear of losing, uh, letting your, your coaches, teammates, family members, whatever, making them, like uh, letting them down, you know, something like that, that, uh, that you know, can be um, uh, something that is heavy on us. And then we put too much pressure and we're not able to, to perform, you know? Um, and so, uh, confidence is kind of like, it, you, it's something that needs to be trained. 
all right, um, on a daily basis. You know, what you're saying to yourself every day um, when you're training, when you're doing strength and conditioning, uh, when you wake up in the morning, you look in the mirror, you know, before you go to bed at night, like the way you visualize yourself achieving your ultimate goal and seeing it, believing it, feeling it before it happens, you know, um, is so important because then you, you're building up the strength to deal with whatever gets thrown your way, you know? Um, and a lot of times on the day of, in the heat of the moment, like maybe you're, you're competing in a competition, you're going round by round, and you can start to see, all right, I got that guy next, you know? Um, it's really easy to let the team that they're from, or maybe you watched them on YouTube, you've seen them before, they have a name, they, you know, are dangerous at a certain thing, and you start to put in your mind like, oh, okay, you know, this guy's from such a team, uh, or he, he's won this and he's won that. He has uh, such a good guard and you start building them up. Maybe you're not even putting yourself down, but you're building them up in your head, you know, to be like unbeatable. And you think that like they're, you forget that they're in the same division, they're the same belt, the same age, the same weight, you know, all this stuff. And you start to think, oh, they're like, so much better when they're just the same, you know, they're a human. Um, and all that matters is what happens inside that five, six, seven minutes, you know, it doesn't matter how many tournaments they've won, what they did on that day, you know, uh, they might beat you 99 out of a hundred times, but all that matters is this next seven minutes. If that's the world finals, they could have beat you 10 times before, but if you win the world finals, you're the world champion, you know? Um, and so kind of like, Clearing out your mind at the same time is a big part of being able to be confident because you have to clear out all the, the baggage and all those other thoughts. Focus on you, all right? Um, be free, you know? Get in your zone, your little transformation process. And, uh, you know, just, just let it go. Like, all you can do, what you can, the only things you can control is your preparation, all right, so if you did everything possible to be at your best, then be confident because you couldn't be any better, right? You couldn't be any better than what you are. And then your effort on that day, right? And so you can only give your best in training and give your, your best on that day. So the only thing you should, be thinking of, you should be thinking about is I'm going to give my absolute best. It doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. I'm going to give my absolute best. And I know and I believe that my best will get the job done. Um, and that's, that's it. You know, that's all you should be putting in your, in your mind. I prepare for this. I'm ready for this. Um, you know, everything is, is I will, and I am not, you know, hopefully or maybe, you know, um, and, uh, you know, try to forget about like, Oh, I have to pull guard first, or I got to get the first score. Like, just let all that go. All you can do is give your best. Don't overthink it, you know, be free and give your best. Um, but that takes the daily training, your self-talk, writing things out, your affirmations, your visualization, it all has to come together um, in order for it to really work. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, thank you, Sensei. You're welcome. Any, anybody else? So I have a question. Yes, yeah, Caesar. How are you? Great, man, how are you? Good, good. Great to see you. Um, so my question is, um, so when people go to take me down, a lot of the times I end up with, with the guillotine, but with the arm in. And sometimes I don't have time to clear the arm. So I'm having troubles finishing the arm in guillotine. Just wanted a tip on how to finish it. Okay, good question. I actually prefer the guillotine with the arm in. Um, I think it's harder to escape because with the arm in, you know, they're more trapped in there. Um, and you have a few more transition options uh, of where you can go afterwards. Um, you know, and, and also because the no arm, it's kind of better if you have shorter arms. Um, and, uh, and you kind of like the high elbow is the best way to, to, to finish the no arm, but you need flexible shoulders. My shoulders, it's hard for me to get my, my arm like vertical enough for, for a high elbow. Like even just right. doing that, I'm a little sore. Uh, and on my right side, it's, it's even even harder. Like 
ah, I can't go up that high. So I, I prefer the arm in. Now, it's all in the angle of your squeeze. You can't go straight at all. With the no arm, you can go straight and that's fine. Um, you know, but with an arm in, you really have to make sure you have this kind of sideways squeeze going on. Um, and it's funny you asked that because actually just a day or two ago, Flow Grappling posted a little clip of me training and I hit a, a, an arm in guillotine. Um, so you can really see it in action there, the way I squeeze and how I twist it. I'll show you now. This is the kind of stuff that Dallas loves, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, let me see, let's go over here. Just, uh, just come on. First thing that's super important is that my arm doesn't go all the way around, okay? I, I don't wanna go too deep um, on this because now I don't turn his head quite the same, and uh, but my my hand isn't in the proper position. It's too easy to defend this, um, and in the beginning, his head can pop out a lot easier as well too. So what I want to do is keep my hand over here on the side of his neck, okay? And I reach through with my other hand, so my other hand comes through to make the outside grip, okay? Getting wrap, wrapping around. Uh, the pinky side of my palm, right? So you get that grip. So it feels like there's a little bit of space, but that's okay. We're gonna close that space by squeezing our elbow to our ribs. You see how that folds his chin into his chest and it immediately starts to put uh, a choking pressure, all right? But now I have to make sure I don't go flat at all, okay? Uh, it's too hard to finish the arm and guillotine flat. So, I need to start to, when I kind of follow that squeeze in my elbow onto my side, okay? Going towards my shoulder. And as I do that, I'm gonna make my bite with my outside leg, right? Um, so now here things are locking in, okay? And that's how I'm gonna squeeze. Now normally, I mean here I could definitely finish it, but normally they're gonna fall over to their side in their effort to, to escape. So that's why this, this bite is super important. Okay, this bite here helps me transition on top. It brings me on top, all right? If I don't have that bite, I'm gonna have a hard time following him up. So this is probably for me the most important thing that I think about is making sure this is locked on tight so it brings me over, okay? Now, once again, once we get on top, we can't go flat, all right? So I have the grips. I'm gonna use my forehead, okay? And I'm gonna keep squeezing my elbow to my ribs and I'm gonna sprawl my right side out so I'm heavy on his, his head. And as I squeeze, there it is. Oops, sorry. There your chin. Sorry, his tooth popped. Uh, <laughs> um, so I still, like this is everything, okay? This side crunch vibe locks everything in and uh, and then the drive down, that's what really gets the choke, okay? I can't go too flat, right? Um, so here, let's go this way. Once again, I get it locked. I fall to my side. I bite down real hard. Boom, okay? I can get here, but most of the time they fall over. The bite brings me to my forehead and back and look. I'm gonna say I'm this knee. I'm gonna sprawl this knee. Okay, this way, sprawl that on one side. Uh, you know, you can even force that. Uh, you know, if I get kind of stuck, uh, let's go this way. If I get stuck trying to finish this and it's not happening, Okay, he's strong enough here. I look to, to sweep him on my own. So I put my butterfly hook in, and I'll sweep him over, bring myself on top, and now I can have a, a better squeeze, sprawl, and there it is. All right, so, um, you know, with the arm and guillotine, you have the control, you have the time, that if you need to, you can sweep them over. And then, I mean, you're, you're basically always gonna finish it from on top. 
the most part. Yeah. Um, and, and once you get on top, you have other options of transitioning to a DARS or an Anaconda. Um, you know, there's some nice extra choking options with their arm inside that you don't right. get without the arm. Um, but the biggest thing is the side, kind of the side crunch, turning everything in, making sure your grip is up here and not going all in. The only time I can go all in is if I have their arm across my body. Okay, so if his arm happens to be on this side of my body, now I don't have to grip over here. I can pull it all the way through, and that's going to be really tight. Okay, uh, but that's a different guillotine variation. And there are some guys that, you know, that's their, their preferred one. That's their, their specialty um, is the arm across guillotine. Um, but, uh, you know, play with it. And, and if, if you want, just go to Flow Grappling uh, and, and go back a couple of days. I've, they've been posting a lot, so you'll have to scroll through a little bit. But um, I was actually going to share it tomorrow myself. So, you, you know, if you want, just wait for tomorrow. Um, and you can see a clip of how, how I do it. And you'll see it perfectly, how I really adjust the squeeze, um, go to the side, the guy flips over, I follow him on top. It was just like I just showed. So, um, but it takes, it takes a little bit of playing around with it. You gotta, you gotta feel the squeeze. And uh, you know, once again, always look for your other options there. Some people have a tough neck.